Welcome back all you beautiful bulletproof handymen and women to the bulletproof handyman business YouTube channel. So today's topic, I think if I had to make a video of like the top three pillars to base your business on, top three rules to follow, this would be in the top three and it very well could be number one, short of like don't show up drunk or don't not show up at all, don't do shitty work. I think those sort of speak for themselves. Uh, but of the real, like, policies that you run your business on, I think this is top three, if not number one. Uh, before we get started, I do want to remind you all, today is the 28th, August 28th. If you're watching this before September 1st, I have my link in the description for Jobber, which is 20% off for the first six months. However, when Jobber runs promotions, you're able to combine their promotions with my promotion as well and get even more. So my link is always good. That's not going to go away. But Jobber's promotion ends on the 31st. That's the last day. So if you're in the in a position where you're already on the free trial and you have to make up your mind soon, try to do that before the 1st. Or if you're planning on getting your software, whether Jobber or anything else, and you want to try the free trial, if you're needing it soon, try to get it before the 1st because their promotion expires at the end of the day on the 31st. And then you'll only have my 20% off to use after that. Now, I'm sure they'll have more promotions in the future. I'm just letting you know right now, if you're going to be purchasing either way, try to do that before the first so you can get that additional discount from Jobber. So moving on to the subject of this video, why I'm so damn tired and what you need to know about the pillars of running your business. <clears throat> if y'all have been watching me for a while, uh, I'm going to say four months ago. I haven't timed it. I don't really remember the dates. It all sort of blends together in a fog for me. But I had this one company with multiple, multiple property managers, anywhere from three to six managers at any point in time because they have a high turnover rate. This one company, I went from, over the course of a few weeks, I went from receiving, on average, let's say three to six jobs per day from them. Like, no day ever went by without at least getting a, a couple jobs. And many days were as many as six jobs a day coming in. They kept me extremely busy. Uh, my business wasn't based around them. I do have another client who's almost as big as them. And on top of that other client that I'll, that's almost as big as them, I have a handful of smaller clients. But what happened was the workload went from three to six jobs a day to three to six jobs a week. And really not even six jobs a week. It went from three to six a day to like three a week over the course of a few weeks and it stayed there. Now, what I happen to know from experience is when that happens, nine times out of 10, that's because somebody new and cheaper than you, somebody with better prices came along and they jump ship to go try to get those better prices. And I'll tell you what happens so far every single time. This was actually the first time that I started wondering if I was wrong and this wasn't going to happen. And sure as shit, I was right. So here's what happens. You're doing your work, and if you're watching my channel and you're trying to follow some of the things I'm doing, you're charging really good money for the work you do. Really good money. Minimum $100 an hour overall. Sometimes, I mean, some of you guys, like, depending on where you're at, you can charge $200, $250 an hour in some of the bigger cities. But you're charging really good money for the work you do. Another handyman comes along, and he comes in and says he can do the same stuff I can do, but cheaper. So they send him a few jobs, and of course, being new, he goes and he knocks them out and he impresses them. So they send him a few more jobs, and he knocks them out and he impresses them again. They don't know if it's good work or not. They just have pictures and a description, and they're assuming that he did a good job. Now, typically what happens is as early as a month goes by, sometimes up to three months. Before this time around, I'd have said one to three months after that happens, you're going to start getting jobs again if you're a good handyman, if you do like I do. And I, I want to reiterate this a thousand times. I don't think I'm better than anybody. I think I just choose to not hack these jobs. I choose, you know, it's 740 at night and I'm doing this video for you all right now. But when I'm done, I'm going to go back to doing admin work for my business. Most people just don't choose to do that. They don't choose to put in the effort that I choose to put in. I'm not better I'm not really truly masterfully skilled at anything. What I do is I follow through and I follow through and I follow through and day after day after day, I wake up 
early in the morning and I hit the ground running and I work my ass off all day long every day to keep my property managers taken care of. That is hard to maintain. It's been almost three years. Next month will be three years of this business. It'll be three years of me working day in and day out incessantly to earn what I have. And most guys don't do that. So one to three months after that workload drops off, what happens is they start getting callbacks. So for example, let's say he had a towel rack to replace coming loose in the bathroom. He's going to go and if he's a good handyman, he's going to fix it correctly. And there's more than one way to do this. I personally am a fan of toggle bolts because even if the drywall's ripped out, that toggle bolt goes beyond where that ripped out drywall is. You don't have to move the rack over to where you have a good drywall. You don't have to do a drywall repair. It's nice and solid, and you can retighten it in the future if by chance it happens to come loose, but they never do. At least so far, none of mine ever have, and I'm three years in. So, they start getting callbacks, and they start getting more callbacks. The guy gets inundated because they're now sending him the quantity of work that they used to send me, and I know that that work is almost impossible to knock out in any reasonable amount of time. So this guy starts falling behind, he starts having a lot of excuses, he starts missing appointments, tenants start calling about things that were fixed but not fixed correctly, he didn't show up on time, he didn't show up at all, any number of things. And over time, they start realizing, damn it, this cheaper guy, even though he's cheaper, he's making our jobs hard. And if you listen to this channel again, I've said many times, your job is to make sure your property manager's life is easier because of you. Your job is to take maintenance off of their plate. What you need is for them to feel like they can send you a work order and you don't even need to reply and say that you received it. You want them to feel like I just send him work orders and then a week or two later I get an invoice and just they don't have to think about it. They don't have to answer phone calls. They never hear from clients. Never, ever, ever. Sorry, tenants. They never hear from tenants, they never get any complaints, and they get very comfortable just sending you everything. That's where you want to be. Well, they don't get that with cheaper guy. There's a reason the cheaper guy is cheaper. Anybody who's experienced at this and knows what to do and how to do it, they also, in order to get that experience, they learned along the way how much they can charge, and they will be charging what they can charge. For the guys who are cheaper, the only reason to be cheaper is because you're less experienced. If you're less experienced, Unless you're willing to work as hard as I've worked and as hard as I know all of y'all are going to be working, unless you're willing to do that, you're just not going to cut it. So inevitably, one to three months later, the work orders start flowing back in. Now for me, I think this has been about four months, and I started worrying about a month and a half ago. I started going, damn, I feel like... Now don't get me wrong, the workload did pick up about a month and a half ago. But it didn't pick back up to the three to six jobs a day. It just picked back up a little bit. But I started going, okay, okay. Looks like the other handyman's messing up. <laughs> and they're finally starting to send me some more work. This is going in the direction I think it'll go in. But it didn't pick up anymore from that for a while until now. <clears throat> now I'm exhausted. Because not only did the work pick up, but there is a new property manager at this company, and she seems to be sending me everything, everything she gets. As far as I can, I have, a, I have a decently good gauge, like a reasonably good gauge of about how many properties a property manager is going to be managing and about how many workloads she would be receiving, how many work orders, the quantity of workloads she would be receiving on any given time frame. And I can kind of tell when they're sending me everything versus when they're just sending me one or two jobs here and there. When it's one or two here and there, it feels like one or two here and there. When it's everything, it's four in a day, and then it's none for a day, and then it's three in a day, and then it's two in a day, and then it's four in a day again. You can get a feel for it. When they're spacing it out, they space it out pretty good. If you're getting everything, then what you get follows the roller coaster. And that's what this is all about. This whole video right now is about this roller coaster. <clears throat> so, I had, to le I had to let guys go when the workload dropped off before. Number one, because they weren't doing a great job to begin with. But when they're not doing a great job and you're buried in work, you still end up, even though you don't want to, you'll send those unreliable guys. At least you'll send them some of the easier work 
that it's really hard for them to screw up and you follow up on them because the alternative is letting your property managers down. But once the workload dropped off and they're out there doing crappy work and I'm giving them work that I could be doing, I just had to let them go. So, you know, I pared everything back down. Well, now all of a sudden everything's pared back down. Boom. Workload shoots back up. I don't have the manpower to handle it. I have one really good handyman that's working for me and he's great he's experienced he's been doing this forever he knows exactly what he's doing he almost treats me the way that i treat my property managers he calls me if he really needs to but otherwise i send him work orders and he sends me pictures and a description and i invoice it and i pay him very beautiful relationship but he has his own property managers as well and I'm sure he'll grow inevitably just because he is good at what he does. There's going to come a point where if he just keeps doing a good job, he's going to get buried in work and not have time for mine because he can charge what I charge. And if I if I pay him everything I charge, then there's nothing for me in it to be doing all the extra work to get him the work and to get it all signed off. So obviously he makes a little less working for me than he would make without me being a middleman. So I expect him to slowly over time just not need me anymore. Uh, I do have my son back working with me. He spent the summer busting his ass outside in this 107 degree day in and day out heat, getting abused and mistreated. And there finally came a point where I just said, okay, that's enough. I think he's had a long, hard summer working in the heat. And I feel like maybe if I give him another opportunity to come back to the company i think he might view what he's doing a little differently and he seems to be he's super motivated he's kicking ass he's making calls when he can't reach me he's making calls in terms of how to handle a situation when i can't be there <coughs> to tell him how to handle the situation uh he's doing good he's got a friend he brought on board with him but long story short is i just i don't have the manpower so i'm just busting my ass day in and day out long nights, long days, plus I've got this YouTube thing, and this is what I really love doing, you know, I enjoy running a handyman business, I wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't something I wanted to be doing, but I really love sharing all of this with y'all, because I have dozens upon dozens of y'all, in fact, at any point in time, I have anywhere from like 6 to 12, up to a dozen of y'all, at any given point in time, are email <coughs> emailing me on a semi-daily basis, uh, letting me know how it's going, like you're actively out there getting your property managers, getting your first work orders. They're emailing me and asking questions about the invoicing, about the communications, about how to handle certain situations as they pop up, which is really great because it provides me with a better understanding of the kind of content that y'all need. Like it, it reminds me, oh yeah, I haven't really talked about that on the channel and that is important. So this particular video is about that roller coaster, right? So then the the question is, what do you do about it, right? So all the workload drops off, all the workload picks up. It's going to happen again, I promise you. I know this going into it. There will be more cheaper handymen. They will try them out. That will result in a drop in my workload. The goal is to try to even that out to something like this instead of something like this. So how do you do that? The answer is diversify. I'm, I'm going to beat this horse, this dead horse, all day long until everybody understands. If you get one property manager, I don't care if she keeps you busy 24-7 and she provides all the work you can handle. If you have one property manager and you lose that one property manager, you're done. You have to go get another one like that, and you can't always get one just like that, at least not for full-time work. You can get one or two to start testing you out but it's going to take you some time to build them up into the type of client that just keeps you fed with work consistently. So you're going to need to have more than one. And if that means you have to hire a helper or subcontract to another handyman like I do, that's how I handle it. Inevitably, if you do a good job, you will get more and more work and there will come a point where you either have to not take care of your property manager in a timely fashion or you have to either hire a helper or sub some of the work out. I don't hire helpers because I don't need any help. I'm an independent kind of guy. Perhaps it's one of my flaws. It's not always the best trait to have, but I'm not used to having people available to help. I've always had to do everything on my own. Sh let me rephrase. There have been people and there are currently people who are always willing to help me. 
but I generally find myself in a position where I have hard things to do and they need to get done and I just need to get them done by myself right now because I can't wait. So I just, I don't use helpers. I don't want anybody bringing me hammers and stuff. What I want is independent people where I can be of value to them while they're being of value to me. <clears throat> and that's the setup I have. So you're going to have to consider that. Uh, I'm going to tell you a short story. You may have heard it before if you watch this channel, but my first really big client was like 90% of my workload and they just ghosted me one day. They actually offered me to bring my LLC in under their umbrella corporation as their maintenance department. They wanted to have my LLC to own it while I still run it and I'm still in charge of it, right? Well, I knew I knew I wasn't making this kind of money then, but I saw where things were going and I knew what kind of money. I knew that this was going to easily be a six-figure career for me very quickly. So I told them that. I said, hey, look, I know where this business is going. I know what my value is. I know what I'll be doing by this time next year. So I'm willing to discuss this with you, but I won't be accepting anything less than what I could do for myself without you. And <clears throat> right after that, they were buying a smaller property management company. And I never heard back from that email, by the way. They didn't respond. Like a week later, they were buying a smaller property management company and certain things have to close before that sale happens. And one of those things was a particular move out. It needed to be invoiced and closed out before the official sale of the business could transfer. So as, as they were trying to get that closed out, they told the guy that owned the other business, contact Ray. He's a handyman. He'll do this move out for you. So the guy contacted me. I sent him an estimate. Long story short, he didn't like my pricing. He said, it seems like you're trying to make about 100 bucks an hour. And I said, yeah, I typically don't leave the house unless it's to make about 100 bucks an hour or 600 a day. I can't remember which I said, but I, I just agreed. I was like, yeah, no, it's, that's about what I'm trying to do. And after that day, they ghosted me. They were all of my business. They put food in my fridge. They paid my bills. My entire family depended on the work continuing to come from them. And when they ghosted me, and I didn't even know I was ghosted right away. You know, it took a few days to figure out, like, yeah, something's up. And they're not sending me any more work, and I need more property managers. So I got my ass in gear, and I went and found the property managers, and I'm still with both of them. I found two big ones, and I'm still with both of them today. They both turned out to be, well, one turned out to be great. The other turned out to be, to say the least, profitable. They may not be my favorite. They are kind of a pain in the ass at times. Uh, they jump ship and come back and jump ship and come back. They are kind of who this video is about. The other one loyal as can be. I'd do about anything for those guys. The other property management company I found, they still to this day just send me basically everything. I love them to death. But so that company ghosted me, right? And I was in a bad position and I got lucky that I was able to find replacement work that fast. So the moral of this entire video, what it all boils down to is this is a roller coaster and this will happen to you. It just absolutely will. Somebody will come along who's cheaper and you might want to ask, well, how do you know he's cheaper? How do you know? Maybe, maybe he was better than you. Maybe he got more work done than you. Maybe he got it done faster than you. I'll tell you how I know he was cheaper is because when they come back, what I'm going through right now, as I'm showing up to these jobs, I'm noticing two things. One is in the interim, the very few jobs I did get were extremely complex. I got no smoke detectors, no garbage disposals, no leaky faucets, none of that. Every job I got from them while they were gone, the few jobs I did get were very complex, which tells me they have somebody else knocking out the simple work. There's a ratio of simple work to complex work that's pretty standard across the industry. You're going to get a lot of smoke detectors and a few like fascia replacements or siding replacement, things like that. I was only getting the complex work that obviously the other guy couldn't get. The other way I know is now that I'm getting all the work, every time I show up to a job, and this is for any company, for any job, I always talk to the tenant briefly about how long they've been there, how things are working out, how much work has needed to be done by other vendors so that I can get sort of a handle on the property and its history. But what I also find out is right now, it seems like every job I'm going to, I'm going behind another handyman. The tenant is telling me, yeah, another guy, Steve or whoever, was here a month ago and he fixed it. 
but it's broke again. Or they say another handyman came by about a month ago, but he said he couldn't fix it and he was going to tell them to send somebody else over and over. Now, once I get through all these, I'm going to start finding that they're not saying that anymore. Like three months in, I'm not going to hear people saying, yeah, another handyman came a month ago, but he couldn't fix it or he did fix it and it broke. Instead, they're just going to say, no, everything's been fine. I just submitted this work order a week ago. The last time somebody had to work here was a year or two ago. That's the normal answer you get. When the property manager comes back after trying a hack out, after they hired a hack to go do all the work, you now get to follow behind that hack. So not only are you taking care of all the jobs that are popping up currently, but now you're also taking care of all the jobs that that hack messed up that he took from you that you could have done. And eventually, I'd like to think that the property managers eventually learn their lesson, but the truth is, at least with this one company, I'm not sure they do. I'm really not. This is not the first time they've done this. It's not going to be the last. Now I'm trying to hire new guys. I'm trying to find a good drywall guy, I'm trying to find a good plumber. I'm trying to find a good roofer, especially, you know, but at the moment I have to do it all. So I got to do all the work. I got to do all the admin work and I got to do the work of tracking down new guys all for a property management company that six months from now is probably going to find another cheaper guy that they're going to think, oh, I think we finally fit, found the jackpot here. This guy seems to be just as good and cheaper. And inevitably, until the day comes that I'm wrong, I haven't been so far, inevitably, they will come back because I follow through. That's all I do. Not because I'm better at all. I'm not particularly skilled at any particular thing. I just choose day in and day out to follow through, to answer the emails, show up at the appointments, call the tenants, communicate with the property managers. And if it means I'm up till nine o'clock at night, which it often does on this computer, that's just what I do. You just, you make the choice to do it and then you do it. And if you don't make that choice to do it, you don't do it. That's fine, but you're not going to last long term. So, uh, I hope that didn't sound too negative. I'm not trying to take a negative turn. Like I said, I'm just really tired, very exhausted. I'll get this all worked out. I'll find a couple more guys. We'll get back into a good rhythm. The money will start coming in, which will be nice because there was a drop in income when I'm not subcontracting work out to other people. But <clears throat> I think it's a pillar that you guys need to know because it's too easy to just stick with one property manager if they can keep you busy. You got to diversify, guys. You got to diversify. So with that being said, I'm probably going to go process. Oh, by the way, because um, I'm going to go process the request for the uh, job pricing list and my CVS files and all of that. I'm probably going to put the next hour into processing those. So for those of you who don't know, you can request my jobs pricing list, um, my CVS files, or CS, CSV, CSV files. I keep saying CVS because of the, the Walgreens type of stores, CVS pharmacy. Anyways, my CSV files you can request. There's a link in the description. Those are all of my individual line items that I use with Jobber because I'm on the grow plan, so I can do line item by line item, approve and deny. If y'all have that, if you have the grow plan, it'll be useful to you too. And you can also get my pricing through there. It saves me hours per week. It also increases the value of my move outs, especially almost doubles them. I used to say it raised them by 30%. Lately, it seems to be almost doubling them. So y'all can get that there. I have a link to get some uh, business insurance for your handyman business for the newsletter, Amazon storefront, where you can get all the tools that you need to run your handyman business. And last reminder, jobbers promotion ends at the end of the day on the 31st. So if you're going to need it soon, get it before the first. If you don't have to have it soon, you can wait for the next promotion to combine with mine, or you can just use mine. I just don't want y'all going on the 2nd of September and having to pay a bunch more than you would have paid had you just gone ahead and got it before the first. So uh, I'm going to get to work, guys. Thank you all for being patient with me. I know I'm less entertaining than usual tonight, but I am just exhausted because business is doing good. So I got no complaints, but I wanted to give you all a heads up because now that I'm going through it, it made me realize, man, I really need to beat this horse really hard and make sure they understand diversify your property managers and just know they will disappear for a cheaper guy. And if you do a good job and you follow through, they will come back. They always come back. So I hope you all are out there killing it. Y'all have a good night.